Hi, Medford Arts Center Poetry Gathering friends. This is Vince. And Naomi. Welcome you to our home once again and to the June 2020 Medford Arts Center Poetry Gathering. This month we'll be posting a different video each Friday of the month. So each Friday at around 7 o'clock, search on the Medford Arts Center webpage or go to YouTube and search for Medford Arts Center Poetry Gathering and subscribe to our channel. Each Friday we'll be posting poetry from our local poetry friends, as well as celebrating poetry and literature of women across the world and across the decades. And we'll end each video with words of impact. Tonight we'll begin with local poetry friend Frank. Wind, wind, when will it ever stop? Our teachings say wind is cleansing. When we consider the virus and other things going on today, just maybe we have an explanation for the virus and other changes that will no doubt occur and change our lives for the better. Things are not as bleak as it seems. Keep the faith, trust in the process. The masters are in charge. Thank you, Frank. And now from Joe. Poppies remind us. White stones on the green expanse. Remember their gift. Thank you, Joe. And now from Rita. Inherited love, pass it on a thousand times to people we will never know. Lily of the Valley, baby caps hang pure, fragrant, sweetly green, earthy pearls. Thank you, Rita. And finally from Joe, on these summer days that turn into nights, as you look at the sky at the lonely moon, Joe has captured that moment. La bella luna, brilla la tua luce, luce dell'amore. Grazie, Giuseppe. <laughs> Our first artist was born in Long Branch in 1893. Author, critic, screenwriter, and poet. This is Dorothy Parker's August. When my eyes are weeds and my lips are petals, spinning down the wind, that has beginning where the crumpled beaches start in a fringe of salty reeds. When my arms are elder bushes and the rangy lilac pushes upward, upward through my heart. Summer, do your worst. Light your tinsel moon and call on your performing stars to fall on headlong through your paper sky. Nevermore shall I be cursed by a flushed and amorous slattern with your dusty laces pattern, trailing as she straggles by. Dorothy Parker. Our next artist was born in England in 1806. She was a Victorian era poet. She started writing at 11. Her last collection of poetry was published in 1861, shortly after her death. And in 1845, Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote Sonnet 43. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Our next artist was born in Litchfield, Connecticut in 1811. Abolitionist author, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin in 1852. And upon meeting President Lincoln, he said to her, so you are the little woman who wrote the book that started the Great War. Harriet Beecher Stowe also wrote in 1850, I feel now that the time has come when even a woman or a child who can speak, a word for freedom and humanity is bound to speak. I hope every woman who can write will not be silent. This is Harry Beecher Stowe's 
arrival in the land of freedom. Look on the travelers kneeling in thankful gladness here, as the boat that brought them o'er the lake goes steaming from the pier. Tis Harry like a girl disguised, his mother like a boy, but the father kneels beside them, and their hearts are full of joy. No man can buy or sell them, no trader chase them more. The land of freedom has been gained, the good Canadian shore. And there are strangers on the soil, as poor as poor can be, but the English flag above them floats. They know that they are free. Harry Beecher Stowe. And now for words of impact, words written by an artist born in 1926 and written and recorded in 1975. Bob Nelson joined KYW 1060 in 1967. He retired in 1991. This is an excerpt from Bob Nelson's I Am Your Flag. Traditionalists say I was born of a woman's hand, fashioned from bits of colored cloth by a seamstress in a small house in Philadelphia a year after the new country was born. Historians are less certain of my origin, yet no one doubts my existence. I was created out of necessity to serve as the emblem of a people whose experiment in nationhood was as unique as the arrangements of my stars and stripes. I've been around in victory and defeat. I've seen pleasure and pain. I was raised over the rubble of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. I've been folded smartly by soldiers and handed to weeping widows. I've covered the coffins of those who serve country and community. I also decorate bandstands and concert halls. I am saluted in parades, in schools, and at ballparks. I am part of political campaigns, high holidays, and ice cream socials. I fly from skyscrapers and bungalows. I've been to the moon and the ocean floor. I am everywhere my people are. I am saluted and occasionally scorned. I have been held with pride and I have been ridiculed because I am everything my people are. Proud, angry, happy, sad, vengeful, argumentative, ambitious, indifferent. I was created to serve a people in struggle and a government in change. There are now more stars in my blue field than there were in the beginning and if need be, there's room for more. But those red and white stripes remain as they've always remained, clearly visible through the struggle, the symbol of the land of the free and the home of the brave. I am your past. I am your future. I am your flag. Bob Nelson. And finally, words written in 1989 by Tom Shaman, awarded the Academy Award for Screenwriting in 1990. Tom Shulman. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race and the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. This is Vince and Naomi wishing you all good health until we see you again. Good night. Stay healthy. Good night.